Hello and welcome to the Sarah Carter Show. It's sponsored by AMAC. So that's the Association of Mature American Citizens, the only conservative alternative to AARP. Join the movement. Join me today at amac.us slash Carter. And I can't even begin to tell you how I'm feeling today, like 73 million other Americans wondering, those were the 73 million that voted for President Trump, wondering what happened in our nation, uh, not just on November 3rd, but across the board. I mean, what we have been dealing with, uh, you know, for the last four years, the visceral hate for President Trump, not only from the left, guys, but from the right. There are people on the right in the GOP. Uh, today, I've got Ronna McDaniel here. She's the head of the GOP. She's the GOP chairwoman, and she is working uh, like a, a soldier on the front lines, a general maybe on the front lines, fighting what's happened during the election in the courts, uh, irregularities, uh, people coming forward, affidavits being signed, attorneys across the country, shifting state to state, um, taking all of these issues uh, that we see at the election to court. I've also been talking to sources. I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a minute. But before I go any further, um, here's one thing I want to talk to you about, and it's security systems. Most trap you with high prices, right? It's tricky contracts and you get lousy customer support. So while there are a lot of options out there, there's only one no-brainer. Trust me on this. It is Simply Safe. Simply Safe's got everything you need to protect your home and none of the drawbacks of traditional home security. Trust me on that. It's very, very easy to use. It's got an arsenal of sensors and cameras that blanket every single room, window, and door. It's tailored specifically for your home. There is professional monitoring that keeps watch day and night, and it's ready to send a message to police, fire officials, or medical professionals if there's any kind of emergency. You can set it up yourself. Think about that. You can set it up yourself in an hour. Just peel and stick the sensors exactly where you need them. You don't have to have any technician at your house coming over and taking up half of your day. No, you can do it yourself. And there is no contract. Listen to me. No contract, no pushy sales guys, no hidden fees, no fine print. This is Simply Safe and it starts at $15 a month. I'm not the only one who thinks Simply Safe is great. US News and World Report named it the best overall home security of 2020. Try Simply Safe today at simplysafe.com slash Carter, that's C A R T E R. You get free shipping and a 60 day risk free trial. There's nothing to lose. That's simplysafe.com slash Carter. Simply safe, guys. You want to be safe. And in these days, you can never be safe enough, right? We have seen so much happen in our country over the last year, even. I mean, with the rise of COVID epidemic, what we've been facing now, um, you know, the media has declared Biden the president elect. The media, I say, because none of the states have done that yet. So I don't know what else to say here. The media has declared a president elect. So we have President-elect Biden by the media, 99% of which sold out. Uh, I'll be talking to Ronna McDaniel about that as well. Remember, stay tuned because she is the head of the GOP. She knows what's going on. She has the inside scoop on these lawsuits across the country, and you're going to want to hear her. She's got a lot to say, and especially to all of you out there who feel disheartened, who feel like something happened and you don't know how to prove it. You don't know what to say. You don't know how you're going to handle what's coming around the bin. you got to listen to Ron and McDaniel. We have to stick together. The one thing the Democrats are great at, they've always been great at, right, is streamlining their message and sticking together to some extent. That's how they succeed. Regardless, that's how they succeed. We've seen the GOP so divided over the last four years, not because of President Trump, folks. The GOP is just like this. This is who they are. They're, they infight all the time. They're elitists. They're swamp creatures, just like their Democratic counterparts, many of them. Not all of them, but many of them. And they work in unison sometimes with these folks on the left that are fundamentally trying to change our country. These are elitists that want to protect their way of life. So we'll bring Rana on to talk to her about that. But I want to go into some details here about the election and uh, some of the lawsuits taking place. And I've got my my 
paperwork right here. Jenny was so grateful to put this together. I'm going to be looking at this just because I don't want to be wrong here. And there are so many things changing. First, let's talk about Pennsylvania. We know what went on there. I mean, look at what happened in Pennsylvania with Governor Wolf even before the election, right? There was all kinds of issues, all kinds of issues, uh, changing of the dates, accepting ballots uh, after election day, not for, for no, they didn't even have to stamp. They didn't have to stamp the ballots. Just come on in. Let's look at them. Let's run them through. Right. There's people right now coming out, signing affidavits and saying that they were feeding the system over and over again with ballots. There was all kinds of issues, ballots and warehouses, things being moved left and right. We don't even know. We don't even know what was really going on. But this is what we've got out there in the news media. I don't even know if we can trust all of this, but these are some of the complaints. At a press conference, uh, the Republican National Committee headquarters, a number of top Republicans, remember this, they announced that lawsuit in Pennsylvania over what it claimed was unfair and unequal treatment of Republicans in the state's elections. And that litigation is ongoing. On November 9th, the Trump campaign actually filed a catch-all lawsuit. It was actually in the U.S. District Court in Pennsylvania, and it was asking the court to prohibit the state from certifying the election or at least the over 680,000 mail-in ballots cast in Pennsylvania. Think about that. Mail-in ballots. Didn't I say this early on? It was going to be ripe, ripe, ripe for fraud. Or at least the suspicion of it. Because we don't have this down yet, right? As a society, we, d- we haven't even figured this out. The lawsuit focuses on mail-in ballots processed in the Democratic-leaning counties of Allegheny. I knew some uh, lawyers that were there, actually. Up until recently, Philadelphia, and it argues that Pennsylvania Secretary of State Kathy Buchvar created an illegal two-tiered voting system that subjected in-person voters to greater burdens or scrutiny than those who voted by mail. That's really important. Created an illegal two-tiered voting system. We have to investigate this stuff. Look at Michigan. Alleges lack of transparency. We saw that. We saw windows being covered up. We saw the fact that they did not want to be transparent with counting these ballots. We saw the fact that they kept Republicans out. These are serious charges. This is illegal. You know, two voters filed a suit against the city of Detroit and its elections commission, alleging a number of crimes on the part of election officials. The suit includes an affidavit from an elections employee who makes it clear that a number of claims have been disputed by city officials on the weekend after Election Day. A lawsuit was filed in Detroit by two poll observers, also known as challengers, alleging a wide range of fraud claims. The suit, which includes affidavits, you guys, affidavits that have been signed by five poll challengers and one city of Detroit employee, asks officials to void the election and order a new one in Wayne County. Think about that. We need to find out. I mean, look. If media president-elect Biden actually won, great, great. We can peaceful transition of power. Let's just move on. But we can't move on until we know the facts. We can't move on until we understand what happened in this election. And I believe a lot happened that we don't understand. I believe a lot happened that needs to be investigated. And I've been talking to sources about this all week. In fact, all morning this morning. People that are very concerned, not only about the voting machines that made a number of mistakes across this country. You'll never hear about that in the mainstream media. They just chalk it up to little glitches. Oh, it was glitches. The glitches all were in the direction of Joe Biden, by the way. I did not see any glitches in the direction of Trump. So that's an interesting thing about the glitch that I still don't understand. Here, I want to play a clip right now. And this is um, from Laura Ingram uh, interviewing uh, this anonymous Nevada poll worker. This is on the Ingram angle on Fox News. I want you to hear what this anonymous Nevada poll worker has to say. Where I was walking, the, the Biden van was parked along this stretch. And I was walking to it, so about 150 feet, I was walking and I could see these people hand over what appeared to be white envelopes, just hand over onto this table. And as I got closer, the envelopes were being torn open there were two men or two people dropping the envelopes and two people ripping them open and turning and facing the van and drawing on them or marking them. And as I got closer, you know, as I was walking, they would put things down and pick more paper up and mark on the van and then 
put it down and pick some more up. And as I got closer, I thought those are ballots. Wow. Let me talk to you a little bit about why this person is probably not going on camera and why this person has chosen to disguise their voice. Like so many people that are blowing the whistle on this election, they are terrified because the Democrats are doing something that I have never seen in America before. Maybe McCarthy, right? Under McCarthy. But I've never seen before in our lifetimes, right? To the extent that they are calling out anybody who supported Trump. Let's talk about Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and others. You know, they started making lists. Did you look at that? Have you read about this? Have you seen the platforms and the people chatting back and forth on Twitter? Have you seen what they're doing? They are making lists of people that worked for Trump, people that supported Trump, people that exposed what happened to President Trump in the Russia hoax, people that talked about Joe Biden and his uh, son, Hunter Biden's illegal, I believe, dealings with foreign entities or unethical, let's say unethical, extremely unethical, that potentially pose a national security risk to our country. So instead, the left right now is creating lists. It's like the Stasi, right? It's all of a sudden Stalin-esque. Are we going to get hauled off to the gulags? What is this list about? This list is about exposing, calling out this visceral hate so that people don't get jobs. So that people don't have any support. So that you're stuck out there all alone floating like you're some kind of Trump supporter. Now all of a sudden you can't get work. Nobody wants to talk to you. Alienation, right? Let me just tell you about this. It was a tweet. It was a tweet that she wrote. She said, is anyone archiving these Trump sycophants for when they try to downplay or deny their complicity in the future? What? What kind of person is Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, folks. She is nothing more than a communist. She is a communist. She doesn't believe in the United States of America. She sells out. It is completely un-American what she tweeted out. She even said, I foresee decent a decent probability of many deleted tweets, writings, and photos in the future. So she's basically saying that people who supported Trump are going to start deleting all of their tweets. They're going to get rid of their stuff because they're going to be so afraid. They're going to pretend like they never liked Trump. I mean, this is just crazy. This is just crazy. It's like out of some kind of weird, weird science fiction novel that I can't even put my finger on. It's like Atlas Shrugged or, you know, 1984. It's a group that calls themselves the Trump Accountability Project. Um, And it basically came about right after Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, AOC, called this out. And the group's website basically says, remember what they did. We should not allow the following groups of people to profit from their experience. Those who elected him, those who staffed his government, those who funded him. You are those people. They are talking about you. 73 million Americans, more votes for President Trump than he had in 2016. You saw the rallies. You saw the reality of what was happening during the election. You saw it for yourself. You saw the fact that Joe Biden would show up at a rally and there would be like 10 people, maybe 20 max. It was ridiculous. How low? How low? Nobody showed up for him. Thousands of people would show up for President Trump. More people voted for him, for him, in this election than they did in the last. It was the other way for President Obama. He had more votes his first time around than his second time. And now we're supposed to believe everything that they tell us. And we're supposed to just turn the other cheek. And we're supposed to just allow them to gaslight us and move on. I want to ask you this question. I just read this to you, right? You're sitting there at home. You're cooking dinner. You're maybe making breakfast. I don't know what time you're going to be listening to this. Maybe it's before you go to bed. Maybe it's when you get up in the morning. How do you feel when you know that there is a group out there called the Trump Accountability Project 
that is putting names of people on a website to basically keep them from getting a job, keep them ostracized in their own nation because they supported a duly elected president of these United States. You tell me, as an American, is this okay with you? Are you okay with that? That's so not okay. This is not the nation of our founding fathers, right? What's going on here? And what if, what if the Senate actually goes to the Democrats, right? What if Chuck Schumer, what if Georgia actually goes to the Democrats? This is all eyes are on Georgia. I keep saying that over and over and over again, because that's it. What do they want to do to our country? What do they fundamentally want to change in our nation? Ocasio-Cortez's Green Deal was the biggest joke ever. Years ago, she probably would have been laughed right out of Washington, D.C. There was no way somebody like her would have ever won an election. She doesn't even know what she's talking about. She doesn't even know what she is talking about. She's un-American. And that's a, I'm just saying the facts. She's un-American because nobody would tweet something out like this unless they were like, you know, some old Soviet guy, maybe, you know, hanging out like, oh, you know, Vladimir, we will put all of our enemies on a list, on an enemies list, right? Oh, great. Thanks. Thanks, Ocasio-Cortez. And we'll talk about all her stupid green deals and all of that in later podcasts. But I want you to think about that. We have had so many of our young, so many young Americans in our university systems, in our schools, being brainwashed by professors and teachers who have bought hook, line, and sinker into the socialist communist ideology. I, I debate on Twitter with old bosses of mine who are literally hook, line, and sinker, yet just down for the Socialist Party of America. They want a Bernie. They, they're, so, they're so naive that they actually trust the Iranian government. They're so naive that they actually believe that China somehow is going to be just like opening their arms to us. And, you know, one day that if we push capitalism enough, you know, China's going to change. No, it's not. They actually believe all this nonsense. I just want you to think about how important our nation is. And I want you to think about the fact that we are not going to give up this fight. Whatever happens in this election, please, please, please listen to one thing that I have to say to you. Please do not give up. Please continue to fight. And please move forward. Move forward forward and do not allow people like AOC or these Democrats or Kamala Harris, which is so she's so radical. Wait till you guys see if she ends up being vice president. Well, she'll actually be president. Wait till you see what comes out of that. These are radical thinkers. These are radical people that radically want to change your country. Don't let them scare you. Don't let them make you hide. Stand up to them and stand up for what you believe in and stand up for your country. You don't need to be ashamed at all. 73 million people voted for President Trump. That's a heck of a lot of people. Stand together. Don't be cowards. Don't be forced into the dark. They can't do anything. They can't do anything unless you let them. But before we get to Ronna McDaniel, who I'm so excited to bring on, I want to talk to you a little bit about something that has really changed my life. And that's Super Beats Soft Shoes. You guys, it's so great. I keep telling everybody this. It's like taking a Starburst. I took mine this morning. I feel great. I have energy. These Super Beat Soft Chews combine non-GMO beets with a powerful new ingredient, grape seed extract. The grape seed extract used by Super Beats Chews has been clinically shown to be, listen to this, two times as effective at supporting normal blood pressure as healthy lifestyle alone. Isn't that great? Better blood pressure means more energy the way nature intended without the jittery caffeine or stimulants. Now you can take just two delicious chews a day. That's anytime, anywhere to get the blood pressure support you need and the energy you want. Do what I did and support your heart health with delicious super beet chews. 
Get your Super Beat shoes today at GetSuperBeats.com slash Carter. And when you buy two bags, guess what? They'll throw in a third for free. That's GetSuperBeats.com slash Carter. Rana, I don't even think there needs to be an introduction for this incredible lady. She is Rana McDaniel, and she is uh, the head of the GOP. Rana, thank you so much for being a part of the Sarah Carter Show. I know you've been extraordinarily busy uh, with Kaylee McInerney. I mean, you guys have been on the front lines of this battle since election night. First of all, just fill us in where you're at. Uh, you know, since the top of the show, we've been talking about the election, about all the irregularities that we've seen both in Pennsylvania, Michigan, Nevada, Arizona. But where are you at right now as far as getting affidavits and as far as the lawsuits? Yeah, thank you, Sarah. Thanks for having me. And, and, I, and I, I do think the story starts even before the election with Democrats systematically going into states and changing laws in the name of COVID to remove things like voter ID to make sure that the election was more porous. And now on the back end, we saw many of our election night workers, poll workers, poll observers, volunteers who want to go in and make sure that the election's being run properly, that it's free, that it's fair, were kicked out systematically of Dem- out of Democrat-run uh, counties and cities. Uh, and then now we have these irregularities we're finding. So we have 11,000 incident reports. We're having to comb through those. The, le- the lawyers are looking at that. We're getting affidavits. And we're going to have a recount in Georgia next week. Uh, recount in Wisconsin coming up, court cases in Arizona, Nevada, and Pennsylvania. So we're moving. It takes time. It, we have to be patient. But I say this to people very seriously. With the amount of irregularities we have seen, we have to pursue this. We can never let this happen again in our elections, where people are uh, removed for being able to observe a process, where people feel that election integrity was not upheld. So those are the things we're going to pursue, and we're working hard. Absolutely. Rana, you know, that's something that I, I I ask this question all the time. I've asked it here on the podcast. I've also asked it on Twitter, every social media platform, on television. Why wouldn't anybody want this to happen? I mean, why, if you even if you're a Democrat, why wouldn't you want to make sure that there is election integrity, that every legitimate vote counts, and that there isn't anything that could be construed? But by the way, just to clarify, just so that people can feel good about going into the new year, knowing that this election was legitimate, that there was nothing fishy going on. What are you hearing? I mean, from counterparts, why wouldn't they want this to move forward? You know, I don't understand. And I think there's a couple parts of this story, which is where were the Democrats as Republicans were being removed from Detroit and from Philadelphia and being able to observe the process? We saw in Fulton County, Georgia, they said we're going to close down voting or, or, or counting of the votes at 1030 at night. And then mm-hmm. all the election workers left and then they maintained uh, in the building counting without observers. These are the types of things that create distrust. And then the media won't carry the stories of these people who were there. Um, if you have nothing to hide, why aren't you letting us see it? If right. you have nothing to hide, why won't you let us watch? And that is a huge problem. And it's crazy that Democrats aren't coming out and supporting even just that very element that Republicans and Democrats should be able to watch. Well, Rana, you're right. I mean, civil libertarians, look, let's go back to the very beginning. I mean, President Trump has been targeted. This isn't just about this election. This has been like, four years of targeting the Trump administration and President Trump directly. And I say targeting the American people. What happened here is just a culmination, I feel, of what we've seen over the last four years of this injustice. I I say not just to the president, but to America in general. And you would think that civil libertarians all across this country, many of whom are Democrats, right, and Democrat leaning would just be like, we're not going to put up with this. We don't want this to happen to us. And so we don't want it to happen to them. But we're just not hearing that. Only very few have spoken up. Uh, I think that has to be a shock to the system. The 73 million Americans, by the way, that voted for President Donald Trump are astonished by this. What what are the remedies now? I mean, we're going through these court challenges uh, it's very tenuous in Nevada right now. Talk a little bit about that and talk about what regular Americans can do to be a part of this process, especially for those that support President Trump. Yeah, it is a process. And you're right. We have to show evidence, but it's hard to, to find the evidence. And, and there's another element of this, Sarah, which is people who are coming forward 
are being bullied, they're being doxxed, they're being attacked. So it's scaring people from coming forward. Right. Let me play this and then I want you to respond to it because this is a very important piece of evidence, I believe, that James O'Keefe was able to capture and then have this USPS uh, postal worker who was basically interrogated by the inspector general's office. Because we have senators involved, we have the Department of Justice involved, we have all lawyers' teams gotten a hold of me. I'm not, well, I am actually. I am trying to twist you a little bit because in that, believe it or not, your mind will kick in. Okay. Um, We like to control our mind, and when we do that, we can convince ourselves of a memory. But when you're under a little bit of stress, which is what I'm doing to you purposely, your mind can be a little bit clearer. And Good we're going to go. do a different exercise, too, to make your mind a little bit clearer. Okay? Good to go. So, but this is all on purpose. Okay? Roger. I'm not scaring you, but I am scaring you here. Uh, first, let me clarify that I did speak to somebody that had been involved in interrogations. And what was going on here was astonishing to them because this is how you would treat a terrorist. And also, it was effectively, they were trying to get him to change his mind. This was not somebody who was just trying to get the facts. It was trying to get him to actually change his story. What was your take on this? Yeah, that's the first I've heard that. But it is really, really alarming. But it's not surprising because this is what I'm hearing across the country. Any witness that is putting their name on a, on a court case is getting attacked. They're getting, uh, you know, bullied. The media, you know, doesn't report that. And it really makes it hard to get to the bottom of things when you have this vitriol uh, coming at people. You have people like AOC and others saying anybody from the Trump administration, we need to make sure they never find jobs again. It's modern day McCarthyism uh, against anybody who supports this president. And of course, for some of these individuals, that's really scary because you want to have a job, you need a livelihood. So you want to come forward and be truthful. But when you're being attacked, and you don't have security and you don't have the the resources, it's really, really frightening. And that's that's hurting our efforts, too. And I will tell you, we've heard this from many, many witnesses who don't want to sign affidavits because they're scared of the ramifications. Right. Stalinist tactics, this McCarthyism, this this attempt. I think it's far worse than that because it's an evolution of something we've never seen before in America now, because not only not only is it a political party, but you're right. It's the media in general. So. You've got like 99%. That's what I was talking to my husband about it this morning. Literally, it feels like 99% of the media, the mainstream media, failing to do its job, failing to be a watchdog. All we're asking, all you're asking, I'm sure, is to be objective, to investigate, to, to look into these claims and then take them seriously. But they are refusing to do that. I've got to ask you, Rana, do you feel that something has shifted in this country, that is there a permanent fear right now that we may never get back to the way we were? I'm very concerned about this. Well, I'm so hopeful about the repudiation of Democrats in this election. As Democrats were talking about stacking the Supreme Court and getting rid of the filibuster, I think the American people spoke loud and clear. But the media with this election has been the worst I've ever seen. The censorship you saw on Twitter the Hunter Biden laptop being completely buried, even though the Biden campaign never, uh, you know, said it was inauthentic and never disputed the, the authenticity of that. Uh, the, the candidate Joe Biden being able to hide and never ask t- be asked tough questions. Kamala Harris, the same thing. I've never seen a media say we will rush to judgment if it's against Donald Trump, but we will rush to defend and hide anything that's against Joe Biden. And this is where we are right now. And again, with these stories, and I said this in Detroit the other day when I had a press conference, find some of these individuals. In fact, one gentleman stood up and said, mm-hmm. please come talk to me about what it was like to be there. But you, those stories aren't being broadcast. These aren't crazy people. These are good people. Tell their story. We don't know what the outcome will be of these investigations, but why not hear from people who are saying, I was kicked out and not able to observe. Why did that happen? We actually saw videos of that, Rana. This isn't like some kind of mystery. We actually saw videos where they were putting up poster board against yeah. the windows and they wouldn't let people observe. We actually saw evidence of them moving 
the boxes, the ballot boxes away or the, the where they were checking on the ballots, they were moving those desks away from observers. I mean, it isn't like this is being made up. And I think you brought up a really interesting and really significant point when you talk about the media and the failure to, to hold accountable anybody on Biden's team or in the Democratic Party. Talk about the threats that AOC, you know, we're going to put this up on a website. They've created this website where people's names and their backgrounds and their biographies can be listed, saying that they were supporters of Trump. And it, by the way, it wasn't just Trump administration officials. It was anyone, including me, including anybody who uh, reported on the Russia hoax, including any citizen that donated money to the Trump campaign. So it's, you're not alone. You're not going to be floating out there by yourself, but you would think that the media would be up in arms about these type of tactics. They seem very fine with it. That they're they're totally fine with that. I mean, look at what happened with the, the Goya product and you came to the white house to meet with the president. We're going to boycott you. We had donors, small dollar donors and, and large fundraisers who gave to the campaign and they would be boycotted their businesses or they would lose jobs. I mean, it's so shameful. We do not have a civil uh, discourse in this country right now. And the party that preaches tolerance and acceptance, the Democrat Party, is the least tolerant and accepting of anybody with a different viewpoint. And beyond that, they're bullying. And to see what's happening with these people, and I've seen it now, some of our lawyers who are being threatened to lose their jobs, be fired from their law firms, if they support this this cause, it is really, really shameful. You know what? Have the conversation. Let it go to the courts. Let people work for, for either side and let the information get out. Why do you have to bully people? Why do you have to attack witnesses? What does that say about their party? And where are the Democrat leaders standing up for these individuals and their freedom of speech and the civility in this country? As they're, they're as Joe Biden's out saying we need unity, I'm not seeing him sticking up for these people, these Americans who could use some support right now as well. By the way, 73 million Americans, the most ever voted for a Republican candidate or a party member in general, if if people believe that the election uh, is the sanctity of the election was not upheld uh, on November 3rd. So this is very, very significant. It's not like we have a few people that voted for President Trump that are up in arms. It's literally 73 million Americans that are upset and angry about what's happened here. Um, and frankly, you ask about the the Democrats, you ask about this party and, and how can they be doing this and how can they be threatening? I say it's so highly un-American. This is nowhere near the Democratic Party of John F. Kennedy. This is nowhere near the party of the Democratic Party of the Blue Dog Democrats, you know, the heart, you know, for the American people. I've always said President Trump, President Trump came up against And I'll ask you this question because you're the head of the GOP, right? You're the chairwoman of the GOP. But there were people, there were members of the GOP that were up against Trump as well. So President Trump didn't even, it wasn't just the Democrats, but it was even people within his own party. That's got to be tough. That's got to be isolating. It's got to be frustrating. Well, I've always struggled with that because I don't understand how you can't support the ideals that President Trump embodies, the policies of lowering taxes, cutting regulations, supporting our military. Look at the Supreme Court, what he's done. Mm -hmm. And then you see Democrats saying, we want to fundamentally remove the third branch of government and the checks and balances uh, and politicize the Supreme Court, stack it, uh, change the way our constitution works, get rid of the filibuster, add states. I don't even know how any Republican, whether you like Donald Trump or not, how could you do that? How could you support Democrats when they're espousing those types of ideals, but that's, that's their choice. And 73 million Republicans across the country said we support president Trump with the highest ever total for a candidate for president. And he led the way for us with these historic gains in the house and winning back a governorship and state legislatures across the country. I mean, it is because of president Trump that he's energized and brought in new voters to our party. So that is why we need to get to the bottom of what happened. We need to pursue this. Uh, and and anybody who wants to help, go to GOP.com and figure out how to volunteer or to donate to these to these efforts. It's it's obviously very expensive. And then then we've got to go win these two Senate seats in Georgia to prevent the Democrats from oh, doing that's, the things they want to do. 
Oh, that's it. I mean, Georgia is it right now. All eyes are on Georgia because it can change and shift the Senate. I mean, can you imagine Chuck Schumer, head of the Senate? I mean, that's really how significant the Georgia race is, right? Yeah. AOC says if we win Georgia, we never have to negotiate. And I think the American people spoke loud and clear. They want checks and balance balances in this government. And they do not want a Senate that's going to erase all of our traditions and stack the Supreme Court and the radical, radical things that Democrats are running on. You know, Joe Biden hid in his basement and never was honest with the American people about what he was running on. And we should all be paying close attention to these races, get the president through, make sure that this this process gets carried out with these recounts and then go in for Kelly Loeffler and David Perdue in Georgia. 100%. And before I let you go, Rana, I want to ask you about um, something that Mark Levin has brought up numerous times. I absolutely believe this. Uh, The Democratic Party feels like it's attacking the Constitution, that it no longer believes in the U.S. Constitution. That's the only thing I can figure out when you talk about stacking the courts, when you talk about legislating from the bench. That's the feeling that is coming across. Their actions actually speak louder than words. What can the GOP do? What can the American people do? I mean, let's say they do take the Senate. I mean, but what can we do in an effort to not see that deteriorate and to not see our country significantly change fundamentally, I believe, forever? Well, you've got to get involved and you have to vote and you can't sit back and you can't be silent. You know, when they silence you, then your actions follow. And, and I always say that if they silence your voice, then your actions will be silenced also and you'll stop doing things. And that's, that's the plan. Make you afraid to speak, make you afraid to be vocal. Then you won't go out and volunteer. You won't put a yard sign out. You won't make those, those efforts. We can't allow that to happen in this country. We are a strong nation because we have um, freedom, democracy. We have this great constitution. You know, I always said when I was in Iowa or Michigan, you know, Democrats are campaigning here today so that they can never have to campaign here again because they want to get rid of the Electoral College. I mean, Mm -hmm. so many things that Democrats want to do will fundamentally transform this nation. So we're we're in a fight. We had a good election. Uh, We're going to get the president through. But um, last last week. But we've got to make sure we keep these majorities. And it only happens with people getting involved. That's it. You heard it. Straight from, by the way, you got that great tweet from President Trump. I I can't let you go without responding to it. He wants you. He doesn't want to let you go. I mean, he is fun. Regardless of what happens, this is a man who for years to come, who for years to come will be a contention in the in the GOP. Oh, yeah. He's the leader of our party. Seventy three million votes. Right. Um, And I will say, personally, as only the second woman to run the GOP, he he chose me to do this. Nobody really knew who I was and (laughs) has treated me with respect and been such a proponent of what we do over here at the RNC. And I just appreciate his continued support. It really is humbling. And um, I think he's great. He's going to have a voice in our party for years and years and years to come. And he's transformed it for the better by bringing more people in and changing our party to reach more and more Americans. Well, I agree with you. And thank you so much for being a part of the Sarah Carter show today. And we're just going to keep our eyes on all these states. We're going to keep our fingers crossed. We're going to say our prayers and we're going to hope that our country makes it through all of this, no matter what happens. And I look forward to seeing you as head of the GOP for, for years to come too, Rona. Thank you. Thank you. Ronna McDaniel made a lot of great points, and I know a lot of you out there are very frustrated, but before we go on, before we talk about some of the issues that I think are really, really important, I want to talk to you about some good news. I actually have some good news, and that's uh, from Arm & Hammer, and it's their perfectly imperfect campaign. You know I have a cat that I rescued. His name is Barry, and he uses Arm & Hammer products, which I swear by. But this campaign is to help lovable but often overlooked Shelter cats find caring forever homes. Everyone knows the benefits of adopting a cat. I can tell you, my cat is amazing. He relieves a lot of my stress. And these cats in particular are in need of our love, attention, and support. From now until November 30th, shelters and cat lovers can nominate a perfectly imperfect feline friend and felinegenerousstories.com. 
Remember, it's a fun way to help cats find caring pet parents through shelters. Three shelters will win $10,000 each. Plus, Arm & Hammer is awarding $100 worth of litter to the first 100 eligible entrants. Visit FelineGenerousStories.com for official rules and to learn more. That's FelineGenerousStories.com for official rules and to learn more. Uh, it's great. It's just such a great idea. It's such a great um project by Arm and Hammer. Get out there and do that if you're looking for a loving pet. No better place to do it than a shelter and finding uh, a wonderful animal that you can make your own. Uh, so let's go on. Let's talk about some things, though, that are very disturbing. That's a nice thing. The things that are really disturbing to me are what the future holds uh, under a possible Biden administration. And I am really, really concerned about the fact that we're hearing now from Biden's camp that they want to do this uh, at least four to six week shutdown, right, to keep the coronavirus pandemic in check. Well, let me ask you something. Let me ask you something. We just found out that Pfizer has a vaccine that is 90 percent effective, 90 percent effective. It's been tested all over the world. Why do we need to shut down right now? Why can't we warp speed that vaccine for everyone? You know why? Because if they shut down this economy for four to six weeks again, and then all of a sudden the Biden campaign reopens after he's already president, it's going to look like, wow, look what Joe Biden did. Biden did nothing. We've seen the uh, economy bounce back because of President Trump, because President Trump didn't buy into the lockdown. And it's it is it's tragic. If people out there have, you know, have contracted coronavirus or if there's people out there that are susceptible to it, my heart, it, it breaks for you. I mean, I'm sorry for you and your family. It's a tough thing. My grandfather, when he when he passed away, he passed away before I was born and he actually died of the Hong Kong flu. He was in his 90s and he contracted the Hong Kong flu. It was an epidemic here in the United States. Many people died of the Hong Kong flu here um, and it mostly affected the elderly and it was really tough. You know, it happens. It happens. But you know what's really weird is that Biden actually has a guy, Ezekiel Emanuel. Like, he's on his team, right? Um, and this guy, I mean, this is the hypocrisy of all of this, right? This guy literally wrote an article in The Atlantic, Why I Hope to Die at 75. Why I Hope to Die at 75. Um, it's basically an argument that society and families are better off without people that are 75 and older. So, but then they come and tell us, well, you know, we got to lock down. We got to worry about our elderly. Anybody over the age of, you know, 75 is susceptible to, you know, this virus. Well, what about this guy? I mean, this guy's literally on Biden's team. He's like, I keep bringing this up and people probably go like, what the heck is she talking about? But this movie in the seventies called Logan's run, um, it was like this uh, crazy sci-fi movie where like people were getting killed off because uh, they with the population, they couldn't control the population after this war. And but they didn't think they were dying. They actually thought they were going into some like fabulous world, some other world. Um, they were just believing, you know, just like the Pied Piper was walking them to their doom and they didn't even know it. So uh, that's kind of what I feel like's happened to our society. We're not asking questions, but let's find out. Why does Ezekiel Emanuel believe that, you know, people should only live to the age of 75? Look, Biden's already past that age, right? Biden should be gone, until, according to Ezekiel Emanuel. What about Nancy Pelosi? You know, at least President Trump, he's still there. He's got some time. I mean, this is crazy talk. These are the people that we want in our government? Really? I'm going to read the very top of this guy's story in The Atlantic. 75. That's how long I want to live. 75 years. This preference drives my daughters crazy. It drives my brothers crazy. My loving friends think I am crazy. They think that I can't mean what I say, that I haven't thought clearly about this because there is so much in the world to see and do to convince me of my errors. They enumerate the myriad of people I know who are over 75 and doing quite well. They are certain that as I get closer to 75, I will push the desired age back to 80, then 85, maybe even 90. I am sure of my position. Doubtless, death is a loss. 
It deprives us of experiences and milestones of that time spent with our spouse and children. In short, it deprives us all of the things we value. But he believes, but he believes that anybody of over 75 should be deprived of that. That's what he believes. That's how crazy these people are. And then we've got, you know, AOC again. I want to, don't want you to forget. I mean, I'm just so, I mean, this is so crazy. I feel like I have woken up in a sci-fi novel. I mean, this is not the America that I, my father would talk about when he fought in World War II and he would tell me about, you know, fighting in the Pacific and what it meant to protect our country from our enemies and coming home and being cheered on by the countrymen that supported them. We have seen something so fundamentally different in our nation. It started in the 60s. It just kept changing. And, you know, while we were asleep, while we were asleep, this Trojan horse invaded our universities, our school systems. They started indoctrinating these professors, our children, teaching them how great, you know, socialism, communism is. You know, protecting the environment actually became a religion. I mean, there are kids literally freaking out all over the planet, thinking that we're doomed, that we're all ready to die, that we're a virus on this earth. No, guys. We're a part of this beautiful earth. Yes, take care of the earth. It's like our home, right? We want to take care of it. But we're not a virus. We're not something, I mean, you know, damaging an organism that damages the earth. We are a part of it. But you wouldn't believe that talking to young kids. They don't like humanity. They don't like themselves. It's sad. It's like they hate themselves. I don't even know how else to explain it. I mean, we go back to this guy on Biden's team, right? It's like he hates himself. It's like Ezekiel Emanuel, you know, hates old people, yet wants us, right? Wants us to uh, lock down for seven weeks because there's this virus out there that might be killing people that are susceptible to it. I, I feel, I truly feel like I am in some kind of sci-fi novel. And I know you do too. I know you do too. I know you're thinking to yourself, what can I do? What can I do to make things different? What can I do to protect my country? What can I do to ensure that my children, my grandchildren will have a future in this nation of freedom? The only place on earth, by the way, the only place on earth like this is America. With this constitution and our Bill of Rights, is America. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, it's very simple. You know, I always talk about all these ads. It's Simply Safe. It's Super Beats. It's all this. I love all of them. This is my ad to you about our country. It's very, very simple. Stand up for what is right. Don't give up. Don't give in. Don't let them, that being the left or the right or anybody else, control you or tell you who you are what you should be, and what you should do. You know what's right. I believe in the American people. I believe in you. I believe in me. I believe in the soldiers that were on the front line, that were fighting for our nation every single day. I believe in them, and I believe in you. And that's all we need to do. There are 73 million of us who voted for President Trump. Remember that. And when the left tries to scare you and when they don't, when they look down on you and when you put a, you know, a Trump sticker on your car or if you're trying to hide your Trump political billboards in your garage, you know, and you're hoping that your neighbors aren't going to come up to you, you should be ashamed of yourself for doing that. You should stand up and be proud of who you are, regardless of who you voted for. I wouldn't expect a Biden supporter to do that. And I certainly do not expect a Trump supporter to do that. We're Americans. That's who we are. We have something special in our blood. It's the reason why our forefathers came here against all odds. It's the reason why so many people are still coming here. Something special in their blood says it's worth the sacrifice. I'm going to get there. I'm going to give a better life to my family. I'm going to give a better life to my community. And for those of you who came here, that do not believe that and intentionally want to change that, you're going to be up against us, the 73 million 
who will not let that happen. Thank you so much for being a part of the Sarah Carter Show. It means the world to me to have you here with me whenever I do this podcast, hopefully bringing it to you every day sometime soon. Remember, you can follow me on Spotify or iTunes. Write a review. Give us a five-star rating. You can follow me on Twitter at Sarah Carter DC. Remember, that's at Sarah Carter DC. And uh, by the way, don't forget my pillow, guys. My pillow with Mike Lindell. He's my buddy. He's my friend. Um, he sponsors this show. Um, you can get a standard queen premium my pillow for twenty nine dollars and ninety eight cents. Um, original sixty nine dollars and ninety eight cents. Think about that. Think about that savings. That's a savings of forty dollars. And kings are only five dollars more. So go to mypillow.com and don't forget to use the promo code. Carter. That's C-A-R-T-E-R. That's the promo code Carter. If you like listening to this podcast, you'll go there and you'll support Mike Lindell and me. And I will continue to bring you the stories and tell you how I feel without fear. This is the Sarah Carter Show. We are taking the story back. It's Mock and Daisy from the Chicks on the Right, and we're excited to tell you about our podcast, the Mock and Daisy Common Sense Cast. If you've been stressed lately with the information overload on social media or just don't feel like anything in the news makes sense anymore, don't worry, because we're here to clear things up. Every week, we discuss topics like cancel culture, national crisis, what's happening to our new generations. And if you're just plain tired of people trying to tell you what to do or how to live your life, we tackle that too. Find out more by going to our website, chicksontheright.com, or start listening on the Apple Podcast app, Spotify, or your favorite podcast podcast app. Don't forget to leave a comment or review and subscribe.